I would like to welcome you to a short virtual tour of our Radimax facility. The facility was built back in 2015 and 16 and developed to allow us to do root phenotyping on a high number of crop genotypes. The basic idea is that we need crops that are more resource efficient and more resilient in order to deal with environmental challenges and not least the challenges brought about by global climate change. In order to do so, we want to build a facility that allows us to measure root growth, but also various aspects of root system function. And not least, we want to develop a system where we can do these studies under almost real life uh, crop growth conditions. As only in that way, we can make sure that the scientific progress we do in these studies have a good chance to be translated into actual progress out on farmers' fields. The building of this unique root screening facility started in 2015 by digging out soil profile, creating V-shaped bottom that is almost 3 meters deep and building concrete walls. If needed, crops are irrigated from below using sub-irrigation system. This system comprises of pre-made irrigation tubes installed in the bottom of each pit and it can be manually steered with regards to the depth and intensity of sub-irrigation desired. For root observation, transparent tubes, called mineralizatrons, were installed above the slope bottom. At one end, the tubes are connected to the central connection tube, while the upper end is led through the concrete wall facing central aisle, allowing root imaging. A total of 600 tubes are placed 25 cm apart. The soil profile was created by adding repacked soil with two distinct soil layers topsoil up to 40 cm of soil depth with subsoil below. Drought stress is created based on the fact that plants grown close to the pit edge have less soil volume to grow in, thus will be faster and more severe drought stressed. Plants grown towards the middle of the pit, growing in larger soil volume, does have access to more water, particularly later in the growing se uh, season when there is still water in deeper soil layers. In order to prevent precipitation to reach the crops, the facility is equipped with mobile rainout shelters. Crop management as well as management of the facility itself requires intensive manpower and light machinery. Therefore, light weight tractor and manual plow are used for tillage and harrowing and are carefully driven in order to avoid mineralizatron damages and soil compaction. All the crops are grown in rows, right above the mineralizatron tubes, so roots of individual genotypes can be observed. For achieving such a precise sowing, we are using manual sowing machine for winter wheat and grasses. This way, we are able to create straight rows at the exact place with the right amount of seeds. Fertilization in Radimax is done using a specially designed fertilizing machine, which is run manually over the crops from one to the other end of the pit. However, we use sowing machine for precise fertilization when high nitrogen dose should be applied to only certain genotypes. Weed, disease and pest control is done by spraying, using wing sprayers and sometimes combating weeds include a bit of manual weeding. Our harvest is our sampling, and it is one of the most demanding activities at the facility. In order to get representative samples, the edges of the plot has to be cut out, and usually six to eight samples are taken per each row. After the harvest, straw is taken down, plots are surface irrigated, so successful cover crop can be established right after. At Rademax facility, we are successfully growing winter wheat, potato and grasses. At the facility, winter wheat is grown in monoculture and if no replicates, approximately 150 different genotypes can be screened per pit during one season. Due to different crop physiology, root type and architecture, management of the potatoes are rather different than of wheat and grasses. Potatoes are grown every second year and our experiment include both. Potatoes grown from tubers and those from seeds, which is a rather innovative uh, procedure. Growth of potatoes require building ridges in which potato tubers will be manually planted. 
potatoes are grown with larger into road distance, thus again if no replicates, maximum 75 genotypes can be screened during the season per bit. Potato harvest is done manually, which is one of the most intensive work done at Radimax. Grasses are grown as annual and biannual crops and over 150 genotypes were screened per growth season per pit. Root development over the growth season is followed through root imaging every 3 to 4 weeks from spring to harvest. Roots are observed from 60 cm to almost 3 m soil depth and images are taken every 3.5 cm giving a total of approximately 140 images per tube in one imaging session. That gives us approximately 40,000 images per crop per imaging session. Radimax imaging unit is equipped with four multispectral cameras that can run simultaneously and where starting and stopping imaging depth can be decided manually. Time needed for one imaging session per crop is about two days. Each camera is connected to its own computer from which images are downloaded and ready for further analysis. In Radimax we take roughly 400 to 500,000 images per year. Due to such a large amount of data, manual count is unfeasible. Therefore, we created a software called Root Painter to do it for us. Root Painter software automatically analyzes all the images we take at the facility. The software works by annotating what we are interested in an image. In this one, you can see, we show the software that we are interested in the root, marked with red and not in the soil, marked with green. After about 5 to 10 images, the software starts to predict what is a root and it is user's job to correct the mistakes. Usually after one to two hours, the training is over and the software will be ready for use on a full dataset. On this picture, you can see how good the software is at accurately predicting what is a root. Roots from different species look different when imaging them. In this image of wheat root, it is clear to see that wheat roots are relatively wide and have a high reflectance of light, whereas potato roots are thinner and have less light reflectance. During the Soleil's project, the Root Painter software has been able to be trained on different root types to get as much information out of the data as possible. In order to see how much nitrogen and water different genotypes can take from deep soil layers, we are using isotopes namely labeled nitrogen and hydrogen, which are applied at the same time and at the same depth to all the screening genotypes of the same crop. These studies should give us the signal if genotypes with potential to grow deep roots are those having potential for high nitrogen and water uptake. For that purpose, samples are taken from the plants grown just above the injection area. For labeled nitrogen, we are looking in the wheat grains, potato tubers and leaves of grasses. When analyzing deep water uptake, the transpiration water is collected three days after isotope injections. Sampling plants are covered with the bags for about two hours around noon, after which the bags are carefully taken away from the plants and transpiration water is collected. Large body of samples preparation is performed at our own facilities after the harvest. Throughout autumn and winter, all samples are prepared for being sent to further analysis. Weed samples are thrashed, while potato and grass samples are cut, so a representative subsample is taken. At the end, all the samples are dried in our own ovens and finely grinded prior further analysis. So, as you have seen, we can use the Radimax facility to do root phenotyping in a number of ways. By direct root measurement, but also by using the isotopes and the drought stress uh, gradient in the facility. We have used that in this last project uh, to look for resilience in wheat and potato genotypes by subjecting them to different water and nitrogen stress treatments. We have also used the uh, whole facility for now uh, almost five years uh, in cooperation with Danish plant breeders, uh, doing phenotyping of some of their genetic material and thereby allowing them to look for the genetics behind deep and efficient root growth. Uh, by doing this uh, kind of work together with breeders and here part of the SOLAS project, we hope to contribute to the development of more resilient uh, crop cultivars for farmers in the future.